Hey, what's up guys, Dorian Court here. This video is on how to get a clean and controllable reverb signal that is um, easily controllable, as I said, and uh, easily fittable into a full mix. Uh, I'm doing this tutorial from scratch and we are going to apply some reverb to probably one of the most difficult things to apply reverb to, that is a sample of a full drum loop. Now. I know I'm using the Dr. Octorex, which would make it easy for me to extrapolate individual drums and to process them uh, differently. But for the sake of this tutorial, we are going to pretend that this is just a WAV file and you have no other means of applying reverb to this whole entire drum loop. This maximizer is here for the simple reason that there is a lot of dynamic range in this drum loop, as not to say it's recorded quite quietly. So I turned the volume up a little bit and also added some input gain so that we can work with some decent levels. Most of you Reason users will also oh, uh, have this drum loop on your hard drive. It's out of the acoustic drums, Dr. Octorex patches, and it's just the first dry basic 90s loop. It sounds like this, uh, not 90s loop, but 90 BPM loop. Excuse me, I'm also gonna set the uh, Tempo to 90 here, and uh, let's play it back quickly. Okay, it's a nice and full round drum loop. Now, what happens if we apply some reverb, and for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to use the standard Reason Reverb, so you can all follow this tutorial um, exactly like this. Um, what would happen if we were to apply just the standard preset at maybe Let's put it at 15 or 20% wet. Let's go with 18. So there's a reverb sound. Now, as I pull up the spectrum analyzer here, we can see that there's a lot of low frequencies and of course they also get affected by the reverb, which is not necessarily desirable because the longer the reverb tail, the more it will clash with other low frequencies such as bass or low pads and also um, it's just a very long and full reverb sound. Now there are a couple of ways inside this particular device that we can uh, counter this. For one, there's this high frequency damp uh, dial, which if we turn it up, uh, turns the high frequencies down. Now listen to the reverb tail. I'm just gonna turn up the dry wet here a little bit to make it a bit more extreme and audible. So now the reverb sounds a little bit more damp, which results in the hi-hats, which are very high frequencies, being uh, much more dry, which is, of course, something that's to be desired. We want a reverb tail, but we also want the dry, sort of dryness uh, of the, of the um, signal to be audible as well. Now, for, as for the lower frequencies, there's a built-in EQ here, which if we hit this EQ enable button, um, allows us to dial down the low gain, and this will just affect the reverb tail. And then we turn up the low frequencies a little bit and that would result in, in combination with the high frequency damp and the low frequency cut down here, that will result in a reverb tail that sits around between 250 to 2000 hertz, uh, 2000 kilohertz, sorry, two kilohertz, my bad. So that will leave us with sort of this area right here. Now this, um, might be useful for the most purposes, but I'm going to show you a way which gives us much, much more control. So let me just pause this drum loop right here. See, the problem with using reverb as an insert effect is you can always just blend the dry and the wet signal and any insert effect, say, for example, a distortion or saturation, uh, in this case, a soft tube saturation knob, um, will also affect the entire signal, which includes the reverb tail, but also the dry signal. So if I apply some radical distortion here, let me just turn this down a little bit. So I'm gonna saturate it to hell. So now we have some distorted drums. And if we add the tail there, as you can see, everything gets affected the same way. Now, one of the reasons people say uh, reverb should be used as send effects and return effects rather than insert effects is uh, that you can um, control the full wetness of the signal itself and apply other effects to it whilst retaining the full dry uh, sound in the mixer channel. Now, let me demonstrate that. I'm going to go up to my master section here. As I said, my drum loop is completely dry. I deleted the reverb unit. And now I will uh, right-click the master section and just to demonstrate, I will flip the rack around using the tab key 
right click and add a reverb. And for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to not apply any EQ, not, no filtering whatsoever. I'm going to turn the high frequency damp all the way down and uh, I'll bring up the send level here. So we start with the dry uh, level or the dry signal, I'm sorry. And then um, as I bring it up, I will bring it up all the way to minus zero dB, which will result in a reverb return that is exactly as loud as the acoustic drums dry signal. So that means we are sitting at exactly 50% dry wet. So let me activate the scent here and I'll gradually bring it in. Okay, this on its own might not sound too bad, but it's definitely gonna mess up your mix if you have other elements uh, floating around in, uh, in your song. So uh, we want to apply some effects to just the dry signal, the, just the return of the reverb. So we are going to leave these acoustic drums here absolutely unaffected whatsoever. And uh, we are going to add a chain of different um, effects devices just to the reverb. So. Um, if I were to just uh, right click and add another effect, it would put it in send effect slot two. So what I will do is hold down the shift key and then add, let's say a filter. So we can filter out the frequencies, uh, the low and high frequencies as I showed you earlier. Now we'll do some manual routing. So I'll disconnect those. I'll uh, recreate the entire routing from scratch. So we've got send effects one into the reverb. And instead of going back into the return, we'll then send just the reverb tail, which there's nothing uh, more than just the reverb tail in this very particular chain. Remember that the direct audio output from the dry acoustic drums goes into the mixer channel of the acoustic drums. So those are two separate signals. And then I'll connect the audio output into the audio in of the filter and then go from the filter back into the effects return. So now we've got a chain of two effects going here, but it, those effects are only going to be applied to the return signal of the reverb, which now allows us to filter out frequencies whilst leaving the original sound of the acoustic drums absolutely unaffected. So this uh, D filter, I highly recommend it. Um, you can find it on the Rack Extension store. Uh, for, it's quite cheap actually and it's a very handy mix, mixing tool. Um, this allows me to filter out frequencies from uh, basically uh, doing a um, yeah it's it's a, a bandpass filter that you can set up to only allow frequencies that are lit up here um, to be passed through. So I'm going to demonstrate first cutting out the low frequencies out of just the reverb tail not the acoustic drums themselves and then I'll also take out the high frequencies so that we don't get this hissing from the hi-hat. So I'll just demonstrate that. I'll let the drums uh, play. And now we've still got this full reverb sound. But as I take out the lower frequencies, you can still see, if I pull up the spectrum analyzer here, we still have the low bass of the kick drum, but it's not existent in the reverb tail anymore. Same with the high frequencies. I'm going to filter out the high frequencies to um, uh, get rid of the hissing of the hi-hat, but the hi-hat itself, the dry hi-hat, is still going to be audible. And now it's just a matter of fine-tuning how you want your reverb to sound. Maybe I'll go down a little bit. You might also try a lower uh, or a, a sort of softer slope and then take a bit more away. So now we've got a nice ringing, reverb, not necessarily ringing, but a nice long reverb with um, quite a bit of decay, but the acoustic drums are still perfectly audible. You just filter this out. Now we could use this um, dial in the middle here that allows us to shift the frequency spectrum a little bit to find the sort of reverb sound that we desire. I think that's quite nice. And then of course, I've completely overdone um, for demonstration's sake, of course, I've completely overdone the send level, so I'm just going to dial that back. So there we've applied reverb that won't modern up our mix um, to a completely, uh, like a full stale drum loop. Um, and uh, that allows us to apply reverb to difficult sort of, to han difficult to handle um, musical elements that um, we are going to pretend would not be um, 
uh, you know, fixable otherwise. As I said, with rack slices, you can just use each individual slice and process them individually, but we're not going to do that. Now, another t tip I would like to give you is um, if the reverb is still too present, of course, you could dial down the decay or maybe play with the size of the reverb. I'm just going to bring that up again a little bit. But another good trick is also to set up a what's called a sidechain. Now, if you're not c uh, familiar with uh, sidechaining, there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube, um, both in Reason, the software I'm using here, but also pretty much any other audio software that's out there. But I'm just going to quickly set up a sidechain here, and I'm going to do it the old way in which it was was also done in you know Reason Three, Reason Four. So let me just set this up here. So first thing we do is we create a audio spider audio merger and splitter. We'll use that to split the the outgoing uh, signal of the um, maximizer that I have here. As I said, that's basically just a gain stage. Um, to split it up into two, all right? One of those two we're going to send to the mix channel. So basically what we've done now is, um, uh, hold up, uh, that would be from device here. Actually, that would go, yeah, that would go there. Uh, now, uh, basically what we've done is we uh, didn't change anything about the drum loop. It still sounds exactly the same, but we now have the possibility to, over these six jacks, to, uh, for each channel, so that's, that's three channels that we have available, three stereo channels. We've now got the ability to take a copy of that and uh, send it anywhere we want, and we want to send that to a sidechain compression input. So, I will take this uh, filtered reverb tail, and then I will apply an M-Class compressor because it's widely available ever since Reason version 3 and it's got a nice sidechaining function. So we'll take a copy, as I said here, split output number 2 and put that into the sidechain in. And now what will happen is if we play it back, we can adjust the, th the threshold and sort of compress the uh, reverb tail every time uh, the acoustic drums um, are triggered. Uh, or give out a sound, which will result in the acoustic drums being pretty clear and the reverb being rich every time there's a sort of small gap between hits in the um, in the dry signal. So I'm just going to once again take this to the very extreme. And you can see here that there is the sidechain going on every single time uh, when there is a drum hit. I'm just going to, as I said, take this to the extreme, which will then also, if I just turn this up a little bit, allow you to get pretty creative with your reverb effects. So now we've got quite a compressed sound. The reverb is completely ducked down every single time the drums hit, which gives us completely audible drums, but still with a nice and fat, rich reverb tail. So um, these are the two essentials for controllable reverb. If there is really no other option for you, um, uh, than to uh, apply it to the entire signal. Now, of course, you could split it up into individual elements. As I said, you can extract each rex uh, slice. Um, you could do some frequency splitting and maybe apply some reverb only to the high frequencies. But there's, this is probably my favorite method um, if I have no other possibility but to process an entire signal. This often happens when people will... Um, send you buses instead of um, instead of individual tracks if they render a track for you to mix for example or um, if you download a sample from the internet and um, it just comes as a you know completely solid WAV file so yeah those are my two tips or my <laughs> definitive guide to um, clean and uh, nicely mixable reverb other tips that I can give you is don't overdo it with the decay we've all made the same mistake as to uh, um, design a synth sound, for example, or fat sounding drums on solo mode. And then as soon as we unsolo, the entire thing sounds muddy. And um, yeah, um, you don't have to have decay uh, times of, you know, several seconds. It might sound cool, but it's not going to help you. So, you know, keep it short and tight. It does not necessarily have to sound like a ro room reverb instantly. But um, yeah, I hope uh, this little uh, box of tricks uh, helped you a little bit. And uh, with that, I remain Dorincourt and I say Dorincourt out.